Welcome back to another High Guild video question bank series. If you're joining me for the first time, this is the video series where I give you practice questions and try to train your brain to recognize high yield patterns so that when you actually sit for your exam, you are already developing the neural networks in your brain that help you get free points on test day. So let's jump right into this question. A 20 year old college student presents to the clinic with complaints of sore throat, fatigue, and fever for the past week. She reports enlarged tender lymph nodes in her neck and mild discomfort in her spleen region. On exam, she has pharyngeal erythema and exudates, as well as bilateral cervical lymphadenopathy. Laboratory investigation reveals atypical lymphocytes on peripheral blood smear. This patient's infection confers a higher risk for which of the following? A. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma B. Cholangiocarcinoma C. Squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder D. Gastric adenocarcinoma or E. Colorectal carcinoma If you need additional time to reread the question or to think about the answer choices, pause the video now because I'm about to give you the correct answer. The correct answer here is choice A. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma This question is describing Epstein-Barr virus, or HHV-4. Let's go through the vignette first, and I'll highlight for you all of the key buzzwords and symptoms that you should have pulled out of this question in order to identify Epstein-Barr virus. So first and foremost, we've got a 20-year-old college student, and that is an increased huge risk factor for getting Epstein-Barr. Sore throat fatigue and fever, as well as tender lymph nodes, and hepatosplenomegaly, or in this case, discomfort in the spleen region, are big clinical clues. On exam, again, pharyngeal erythema and exudates, so we're still talking clinical findings. And then you get specifics, so now you're told bilateral cervical lymphadenopathy. So of all the lymph nodes which could be uh, enlarged and inflamed, cervical lymphadenopathy is really screaming at you, Epstein-Barr. And then on laboratory investigations or, on, you know, when you look at the peripheral smear, what you see is atypical lymphocytes. And so in this question, you are given a textbook definition of Epstein-Barr virus infection. And so then the question is given that you've got a patient who has Epstein-Barr, what cancer are they at increased risk of developing? And so this is a second order question because the first part of the question is matching symptom to disease. And then the second order part of the question is matching what you think the disease is to another related high yield fact. And in this case, Epstein-Barr virus increases the risk of developing nasopharyngeal carcinoma. But let's suppose for a second that you didn't know that, right? You are taking this and you're like, okay, I know that they're describing Epstein-Barr virus but I don't know that Epstein-Barr virus is necessarily associated with any one of these risks for in, increased risk for any of these cancers. Could you potentially work backwards by matching the incorrect answer choices to what infection they are associated with and then eliminating them because you don't see that in the vignette? And so let's do that process now. Again, this is the, the kind of thinking that you want in order to train your brain to think like a high yield test writer. So answer choice B, cholangiocarcinoma, you have an increased risk of that type of cancer if you're infected with clonorchis sinensis. Choice C, squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder, you have an increased, increased risk of getting that type of cancer if you're infected with schistosoma hematobium. Ch answer choice D, gastric adenocarcinoma, you are in, at increased risk of developing that if you are infected with H. pylori. And answer choice E, colorectal carcinoma, you have an increased risk of developing if you have a strep bovis or more specifically gallolyticus infection. And so again, if you didn't know that Epstein-Barr conferred a higher risk of developing nasopharyngeal carcinoma, perhaps you were able to look at B, C, D, and E and say to yourself, okay, let's, let's do D for example. I know that if you're infected with H. pylori, you have an increased risk of gastric adenocarcinoma. Therefore, the question when you're taking your exam, if you're taking this question, is does this vignette describe somebody with H. pylori? 
And the answer is obviously no. So let's go through and look at what you would have had to see in the vignette in order to conclude that you were dealing with any of these other four types of incorrect infections. So for Clonorca sinensis, you would have seen biliary tract pathology, and there may have been mention of undercooked fish because that's typically how humans get infected. Really no mention of biliary tract pathology, no mention of fish, that's not the correct answer choice. And so you can eliminate cholangiocarcinoma if you know that it's associated with Clonorca sinensis. Answer choice C, schistosoma hematobium. This is associated with GU and GYN symptoms. You're going to look for things like hematuria. And you're not really seeing any of that here. In fact, what you're seeing is, again, a textbook definition of Epstein-Barr virus. And so if you knew in your head squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder was associated with schistosoma hematobium, you would ask yourself, is this question describing schistosoma hematobium? The answer obviously being no. Choice D, gastric adenocarcinoma, we would have seen things that describe H. pylori, so gastritis, peptic ulcer disease, elevated gastrin levels. Not really seeing any of that here, so we can eliminate answer choice D. And then lastly, answer choice E, colorectal carcinoma. That's associated with strep bovis, or more specifically, gallolyticus. Typically, when the test writer wants you to pick strep bovis or gallolyticus, they're going to give you either bacteremia or subacute endocarditis. And remember that for the purposes of exams, if you see strep bovis bacteremia, you have the presence of the bacteria in the blood, you want to look for colon cancer. And so there's a famous test question for years and years now where they give you somebody with strep bovis bacteremia and it has nothing to do with colon cancer. And then the question says, which of the next steps is the most appropriate immediate action and the answer is going to have to do with screening for colorectal carcinoma. So again, the purpose of this question, really two purposes. One, I want you to train your brain to identify high yield patterns of thinking. Think like a test writer. It's not going to be first order questions on your exam. It's going to be second and third order. You have to constantly be thinking, okay, the test question is describing this. What else is associated with this. If you can think that way, you're going to dominate USMLE or Comlex. And then lastly, just from a first order content perspective, understand that different types of pathogens, whether they're bacterial, viral, fungal, etc., are associated with a lot of seemingly random pathology. And in this case, you have to know the cancerous associations with various pathogens. Keep up the great work. Good luck.